Having access to computers and the internet is no longer a luxury. It is a necessity. Yet some low-income families are being left behind. Part of Vector's Next Generation Learning Campaign, the Home Access Program aims to ensure that more children have the equal opportunity to access technology at home to support their learning. Families can apply for a grant to pay for a computer and internet package with enhanced service, safety features and support. The Home Access Scheme has made a big difference to us because um, it means we've got access to the internet when we need it, not just when we can get it at the library. I used to be worried about Evan getting left behind. Not so much now, but I was aware that it would become an issue. Announced by Prime Minister Gordon Brown at Labour's 2008 Autumn Conference, the Home Access Programme aims to help more low-income families gain access to computers and the internet at home to help support their families' learning. The Home Access Programme has already benefited over 11,500 learners through a pilot in Oldham and Suffolk. The children are so confident now and getting the parents involved is so important because education isn't just about what happens in school, it's about what happens at home as well. So I, it's just been fabulous and seeing this pilot being such a success, you know, I'm really looking forward now to the national rollout later in the year. Home Access is a fantastic opportunity to engage with young people and their families and getting them online and taking the advantage of the real benefits that this can bring. The whole principle behind Home Access is about enabling youngsters to learn in a different way and in a creative way and we need to be able to ensure that everybody has the same opportunity and that's fundamental I think to the Home Access principle. Home Access is very important for narrowing the gaps because it gets free internet access and computers into the poorest families. Schools can't do this all by themselves. It's got to be a holistic approach to looking at all of the influences on a young people, the influences in their family at home and their peers. What we don't want is to create a divide between the digitally included and the digitally excluded. I think it's important for every school and college that they know with confidence that they're building their use of technology on an inclusive basis. ICT plays an important part in education. It's used to add to learning, not to take away from traditional methods of learning. Um, there are so many resources that are ICT based now that students could have access to whenever they want it. I had heard about home access on the news, um, but mainly it was due to uh, the school having a, a parents afternoon that we went in and discussed and went through it all with them. The Home Access Programme is also being promoted by local libraries, community groups and approved suppliers. Families receive a prepaid grant card which they use to buy their package from an approved supplier in local stores, over the phone or online. So every child is catered for regardless of their individual needs, children with special educational needs can benefit from assistive technology under the programme. Youngsters who've got internet access at home and use technology at home are much more confident when they come to school and they're able to see the use for their coursework, their learning and general sort of IT uh, opportunities. Youngsters without internet access at home, without the technology, tend to be less confident. Getting a computer at home is fabulous because I think this will help me with my homework a lot because I can research stuff on it, so if I was having problems with my whole work, I could find it out on here so it could help me. It's really important for parents to be involved with how children are interacting with technology online. Parents are the closest form of support that children have, and it's important that they are able to in be engaged with what children are doing, to understand the technology, so if children do get into difficulty, they're able to turn to their parents and talk to them about it. If we ignore the needs of children who are socially or financially disadvantaged, in the short term, this may have consequences for their attendance at school, their behaviour in the classroom, their taking a full part in school life, and also taking part in out-of-school activity. Already children from the poorest families start school way behind others. At 22 months you can see a difference in development abilities 
by three years old, their vocabulary is noticeably poorer than, than richer children. Um, and those gaps will just get worse at school, they'll get wider unless we do something to target interventions and narrow them. If, if you're not lucky enough to be able to provide a computer for your child, then they, they are going to struggle. I, I personally think that children need to have computers. To create a computer literate culture of learning in the home, the programme must support the whole family, not just the children. However, those that could benefit most from home access are often the hardest to reach. I think the most hard to reach are those uh, who don't have uh, basic skills such as numeracy, literacy, and there's still uh, a large number of adults in the population. Uh, who, who don't have good levels of basic skills and, and really those are the people that we need to get on the learning ladder. Uh, and in the longer term, the more a society takes for granted that people are online, uh, that they're able to access services online, those who can't benefit from that uh, will be excluded further. If I get stuck on the computer, I can ask Colin, you know, to show me what to do. Well, parents are absolutely critical to this. It's very important that they feel totally confident that the uh, facilities that we're giving to children at home can be used to support their learning. The parents know how to support their children at home and that they understand the huge opportunities we've got and, of course, the risks. Parents have a key role to play in protecting children in the online world. So we're doing a lot of work in communicating with parents in giving them the support they need. I think it's been a big change because it means I can just look up jobs or I can apply to different courses and just do lo lots of things I wouldn't have been able to do. Since having access to a computer at home, Rebecca has now found work. Having access to computers in the home um, make a difference to adults thinking about not being isolated and actually being part of the world. Um, in terms of communication and one of the major things for them is that if they can use computers competently then it supports them getting into the workplace. Home access has the potential to impact the wider community and support local objectives, particularly for regeneration and upskilling the local population as families will be able to access public services online and explore new learning opportunities. A dedicated support website, which is preset on all packages, ensures that families are signposted to resources such as MyGuide and DirectGov, while partnerships with organisations like UK Online Centres and the DC10 Plus aim to integrate home access into wider government inclusion strategies. The home access scheme is so important to the regeneration of the borough. For Oldham, it means that it will bring together parts of um, the community who are looking at reskilling themselves. There are areas of uh, unemployment in Suffolk, as I'm sure people will realise. Uh, actually, that's a, a great opportunity for those families uh, to enable them to think about the future. So one of the things that home access can provide is for families who perhaps wouldn't normally have IT in their homes, wouldn't normally be able to afford it. Uh, to have that uh, access to IT, to be able to develop their confidence with using IT and to use those skills when they move into the workplace. As we look to the future, it is vital that we examine the lessons we learn during its development to ensure that the full potential of the programme is realised. It's important that home access isn't presented as yet one more initiative but is presented as part of the solution to those things that schools are trying to achieve with parental engagement, with improving learning, with raising attainment. I think there are some excellent examples of cross-government working and some good lessons that can be learned from those. I think the digital challenge was one of those examples. It brought together the departments from health, education, industry, local government, all around a common purpose. I think that with the political will and the resources to back it, then the Home Access Initiative can be one of those successes. I'm really passionate about this personally. I think it's the biggest thing that we've done to support learning with technology in recent times. And the reason I think that is because the evidence shows this is exactly right. This is exactly what we need to do. And once we get this kickstart going, 
it will develop its own momentum. It was really, really nice to work together sometime because I don't know that much computer than my son know a lot. Then sometimes he wants to ask me some spellings or something. I help him, he helps me. It's really, really good for me and for my son because it's educational and everything. Over the next two years, home access will be rolling out across the country. If we are going to make the most of this programme and change the lives of countless families, then the programme will need your input and your support. Please tell us how you would like to be involved.